Praise the Lord, church. It's good to be with you again this Wednesday for midweek service. Uh, we want to start this service as we generally do and just thank the Lord. He's so good to us. We owe him so much. Let's just do that where you're at right now. Let's just thank the Lord, everybody. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness and mercy. We thank you, Lord, for the name that is above every name. We thank you, Jesus, for the blood of Calvary that is still able to cover sin and unrighteousness. Lord, we thank you for the Holy Ghost. We thank you for your word forever settled. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. All the times you have healed us and ministered to us, Lord. We thank you for doors you've opened for us and doors that needed to be closed. We thank you, Jesus, for this church and all that you're doing in Okmogee. We thank you, God, for the kindness you have shown us. We thank you for your protection and your power. We give you all the praise and the glory for you are a great, mighty God. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Praise God, praise God. We do have some needs to take to the Lord in prayer. Uh, we want to pray uh, Sister Norma is going to have some tests done the first of the week. We pray that everything will be fine on that situation. Continue to pray for Sister Jennifer, uh, that the Lord would touch her with healing in Jesus' name. We have a request for Felix, a young man. The Lord knows all about this and the situation in his life. And pray for Barbara. The Lord knows all about the situation with Barbara and that the Lord would touch these needs and that the words tonight would go and touch somebody's life. Praise God. Let's take these needs to the Lord, everybody. Heavenly Father, we ask you to touch these needs tonight for Sister Norma for a great report, Lord, that would come back in this test that's going to be done. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you could continue to heal miraculously for Sister Jennifer, God. Touch her right now in Jesus' name. Let your will be done in her life. For this young man, Felix, Lord, that your will be done in this young man's life. You know the need and the situation, God. We ask you to touch Barbara tonight. You know this need. It was written with faith. And we believe by faith you're able to touch it. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen. Praise God, praise God. Let this word go forth tonight and be a strength or an assurance to somebody in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> praise God. I want to make a few announcements, and uh, then we're going to have the word brought to us tonight. We've got somebody who's going to bring the word tonight here in a little bit. I think you're going to enjoy the service. <clears throat> Excuse me. But the announcements, uh, Easter is coming up this Sunday, and uh, we we do have something I want to address to the church. Uh, we have talked about trying to have service outside. Do we want to stay in the parameters of, of the guidelines? So I have talked with, uh, in fact, he told me to mention this, to mention his name so that everybody would understand it is on the up and up and we are uh, clear to do this. I talked with the uh, police chief in Okmogee, Joe Prentice, and he has told us that here's how it would work for outside services. We can have 10 chairs outside uh, for those that are involved in the service, no more than 10, and that uh, you can come in your car and you can be on the parking lot and we can have church, uh, stay in your car, there will be no problem. Uh, he has is, he is, uh, educated me on the guidelines and the way the policy is and the parameters that we need to stick with and we're gonna do that. We wanted to try to get this done for Easter Sunday. Uh, that's still up in the air with weather and uh, getting the sound to work out, but we're going to do this if it doesn't happen this Sunday, hopefully by the next Sunday, weather permitting, we plan on doing that. I think that's great. Uh, we can all be together, and uh, we're trying to work out a way for the sound to work out great. We've got some, some things we're trying to get done and believe it's going to happen and work out. The Lord's making a way. I just want to be with the church. I really do. We're going to try to contact people and visit you in the next few days and just come and visit. And, and uh, this, this is working, but there's nothing like uh, seeing each other. There really isn't. But until we can do that, we're going to continue these kind of services like this. And uh, I believe the Lord is, is still helping us and ministering to us. For his word is powerful. It's forever settled in the heavens. And we're excited about that. Praise God. Praise God. Well, tonight's going to be a little different. We have a, a great family in the church. Uh, uh, Brother Josh, Sister Tiffany Vogler and their children. He's a great help to the church, a great part of this church, 
And uh, we, he's going to bring some good words to us tonight. Uh, he's got a great gift for writing and uh, sharing the word. Uh, these are great people, and I'm excited that he would be with us tonight. He's going to come and talk to us for a few moments, and I want the Lord to use him to minister to us tonight in Jesus' name. Brother Josh, come and talk to us tonight. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Oh, well, let's start off by praying. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for this opportunity to come before you and serve you, Father. We thank you for giving us strength and courage in these last days, Lord. We thank you for allowing us to go forward in boldness, Lord Jesus, not to be ashamed of you or ashamed of your word, but to rejoice in you and to rejoice in your word. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. Most of us have heard or know and, some, and to some extent know the story of Jesus Christ. The question is today, are we willing to allow him to reveal his will for our lives? If so, are we willing to obey the call, no matter the cost? Do we truly believe in Jesus and his story? Every true disciple of Jesus Christ at some point has that moment of revelation that brings us to our knees in awe and reverence of him. Because we have come to the understanding of Christ, of who Christ is and what he has done for us. Jesus is the foundation of Christianity. He is often remembered in the phrase, joy to the world. Within that phrase, we find the word joy. And each letter of that word could be broken down, revealing three more words. Within these th three words, we find God's perfect order. And within that order, he has given us the keys to his kingdom. Those words are Jesus, others, and you. If I were to tell you that our lives weren't even about us, you would probably think, I was confused. However, it's the truth. Our lives are about how we serve the one who created them and the impact we make on the lives of those around us, whether it be for years or seconds. Jesus never put himself first. He always put God and God's will first. Jesus even put you and I in our need of a savior before himself. Without him, we have nothing. Without what he has done on the cross, without what he is doing in our lives, and without what he will do in our lives, we have nothing but death and eternal damnation. God has created us and called us to serve him through worship by way of fellowship. And the only way we can have true fellowship with God is to maintain a healthy relationship with his only begotten son. The only way we can maintain this healthy relationship is to build our lives on Christ and have a burning desire within us to do so. We need and should want pure and holy fellowship with the creator of the heavens and the earth because without fellowship without him without fellowship with him we have nothing we need and should want to love him because he first loved us and without love there's no relationship we should want to and be willing to sacrifice some things if not everything to serve him because he first served us by allowing himself to be hung on a cross he became the pure and spotless sacrifice for us. Again, without him, we would have nothing. Without that beautiful little boy in the manger, we would have nothing. That beautiful little boy in the manger would soon become a man murdered by his creation. Now most of us also know that Jesus is God manifest in the flesh. Why did the one and only pure and holy God send his only begotten son to the earth to have fellowship with the most self-serving of all? Why did the Creator allow Himself to be slain by His creation? Because purity cannot and will not have fellowship with impurity. He is pure and we are impure. And because God knew that throughout the generations of history, there would be a remnant of His people who truly have a burning desire to have pure and holy fellowship with Him through the free will offering of obedience and sacrifice. Every story has a beginning, middle, and end. Christianity began at conception. The very moment God's seed entered Mary, our Savior, Jesus Christ, began to fulfill prophecy. That's the beginning of the story about the whosoevers. You see, we all have the same beginning, and that is one of needing a Savior. However, that could very well be the only thing that our stories have in common. Most of us only focus on a few parts of the Savior's story, such as his birth, death, and resurrection. But there is so much more to the story, and God can use any part of his story as our own personal revelation moment. 
creating a deeper desire to serve, creating a deeper desire to serve him, mine was found at the foot of the cross with the vision that God had given me of our Messiah enduring our suffering of sin. Most of us only focus on a few parts of the Savior's story, such as his birth, death, and resurrection. But there's so much more to the story, and God can use any part of his story as our own personal revelation moment, creating a deeper desire to serve him. Mine was found at the foot of the cross with the vision that God had given me of our Messiah, Messiah, enduring the suffering of our sin. I began to weep so much I was in severe pain. In that moment, I was transformed. He did what you and I never could. Not only was he conceived by the Holy Spirit, carrying God's seed into the Virgin Mary, and being born of the flesh, living a perfect and sinless life, whose blood was shed for the sin of all those who would believe in him, but he abolished death. We all need to have our own salvation story and personal relationship with the Savior. This should be the main focus of our lives by building a stronger and deeper relationship with him through prayer, fasting, and studying his word. He gives us more joy, more peace, as well as continuing to reveal himself to us, which then increases the burning desire for greater fellowship with him. We can listen to our pastors preaching and teaching, as well as the testimonies of our brothers and sisters all day long. However, if our pastor's words fall on deaf ears, then they have fallen on infertile ground. We cannot live our spiritual life vicariously through someone else and their testimony or their victory through the blood of the Lamb. Their testimonies don't belong to you and I. That's their walk with the Savior. Philippians 2.12 tells us to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Romans 12.3 speaks of how we all have been given our own measure of faith. This is where we find the middle of our story as disciples. That's the part of the story where it gets interesting. It's often the most uncomfortable part of our story. At times, we can feel a multitude of emotions all at once. However, there's one emotion that we have been given that we must train our mind and heart to take charge over and be more prevalent than all the others. If we are capable of applying God's perfect order to our lives by bringing our body into subjection and making it our slave like spoke of in 1 Corinthians 9.27, we must also take every thought captive, making it obedient to Christ, allowing Jesus to teach us to always put him and others before ourselves. We will find joy unspeakable and a peace that surpasses all understanding. That we may receive the refreshing strength to deal with any situation that may present itself in this life. If we are capable of applying God's perfect order to our lives by bringing our body into subjection, and making it our slave, like spoke of in 1 Corinthians 9.27. We must also take every thought captive, making it obedient to Christ, allowing Jesus to teach us to always put him first and others before ourselves. We will find joy unspeakable and a peace that surpasses all understanding, that we may receive the refreshing strength to deal with any situation that may present itself in this life. The only way we can even begin to take part in the joy that's available to us through salvation is to truly be saved, and true salvation only comes with true repentance. And true repentance is only found at the end of oneself. When we are willing to give up our self-serving nature, we will begin to see God move in mighty ways throughout our lives. Unfortunately, a good majority of churchgoers live their lives with just enough morality to send them straight to hell. Why? Most Christians know the verse John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, and that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. There's a lot of people who take that one word from this one verse and build their lives on it, having no idea its true meaning. Have we ever dissected and digested this, this verse or the one word for what it truly is? The first thing God did was he loved. The second is he gave his only begotten Son to the whosoever. That's us. The third event in this verse is on us. We must believe. Without believing, we have no right to anything but death. Walking with God through his precious, through the precious blood of his son and our Savior is a two-way relationship. We must believeth in him. 
so that we may receive our reward of everlasting life. Now let's chew on that one word in this one verse. The word is believeth. Words, just like everything else, have an origin. If we look at the foundation of this word, we find the truth. We can find three different definitions of this word in the Strong's Concordance, which are G4100, G4104, and G3982. Two of them came from the one I want to share with you today, which is G3982. Believeth is a primary verb, which means to convince by argument, true or false, by analogy, an analogy to pacify or consolate by other fair means, reflexive or passive, to assent evidence or authority, to rely by inward certainty, agree, assure, believe, have confidence in, be confident, make friend, obey, persuade, trust, and yield. Do we as believers truly believe? See, according to the meaning of the word, we must not only rely with inward certainty that he is our savior, we must also act on it because faith without works is dead, like we're told in James 2, 14 through 26. How do we act on it? We, as the whosoever, must be willing to attempt convincing the world of Jesus Christ's existence by persuasion or argument. We must also be willing to give Jesus the authority over our lives, being confident in him, making him our friend, obeying him as well as trusting in him and yielding to him. To believe is to have faith, and faith is an action word. Those that do not understand or do not want to understand the foundation of the words in his word are selling themselves a false peace and counterfeit joy of an impure and unholy illusion of salvation. Matthew 10, 32 through 33 says, Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess him before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father, who is in heaven. And John 1.1 1, 1 tells us that in the beginning there was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the book of John, we also find 1.14, which reads, And the Word became flesh and dwelt amongst us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So when Jesus tells us, if we confess or deny him before men, he will do likewise to us unto the Father. Then John goes on to say that Jesus is the word. We can then take it a little bit farther and say, if we deny the word of God, we also deny Christ. And if we confess the word of God, we must confess all of it. We cannot pick and choose the sections of scripture that we like and leave the rest out because it burns because of the fact that by doing so, we are creating a false God, and God very clearly warns us over and over again not to do so. The word of the Lord is like a fire, purifying whatever it comes in contact with that is willing to be set ablaze. Isaiah 64, verse 8 states, But now, O Lord, you are Father. We are the clay, and you are a potter. And all we are the work of your hand in order... In order for clay to be used by a potter, it must be malleable and able to be worked, which would then allow the potter to further form it into the desired shape of the potter. Likewise, in order for us to be worthy of the Lord, we must desire to be continually purified and molded into the, in, into the individuals he wants us to be. Hebrews 12 tells us about the race of faith and how we are not to despise the chastising of the Lord. He disciplines those he loves. Jesus said in John 4, 23, 24, but the hour is coming and now is when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. In conclusion, do we need what we want and do we want what we need? Are we praying for his will to be made manifest or ours? Do we seek to gain the glory or to give him all the glory? Will we live for him by giving him our everything regardless of the cost or hurt? Because he died the most heinous death ever known to man for the whosoevers that would believe in spirit and in truth. He is returning for a pure and spotless bride, not a half-sleeping harlot. The author of Job stated in chapter 13, verse 15, Though he slay me, yet I will trust in him. Even so, I will defend my own ways before him, 
Job lost everything and was still willing to serve God. Will we live for him because he was slain for us? That's it, sir. Thank you. Thank you all. Outstanding. Praise God. Praise God. That's some great words, Brother Josh. Thank you so much. I believe it, and I know you do 100%. I'm so glad the Lord gave his life for us. Amen. And I'm glad that we can continue believing on him and that he's going to do a great work in our lives and other people's lives. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I just want to validate something for the service this weekend. We will be doing the broadcast if we get it worked out where we can do the parking lot, we will contact you. That's only if we get things worked out and the weather permitting. But if you don't hear from me, uh, this can, we will have our regular broadcast at 10 o'clock Easter Sunday morning. Praise God. We're, we're expecting great things uh, for this church. We're expecting God is, is already doing great things in Oak Mogie. I'm excited. And I know you are too. Praise God. Praise God. Good to be with you again tonight. Let's just pray and ask the Lord that these words that we've heard would settle in our hearts. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your words tonight. We thank you, Lord, for truth. We thank you, Jesus, for all that you do for us, God. We know and believe that you are the true Lord and Savior. We ask you that these words would reach us and touch us and help us and give us strength and encouragement. We thank you for all that you do for us. And we look forward to the next time of being together, if you tarry, in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Amen.